we have two mischief makers at Farmer Brown's Paradise. And it's not the moles, and it's not the chipmunks. It's those duskery rabbits. Yes. This is Gladiator Allium bulb number seven that we are now going to replant. I wasn't sure whether it was Lucy or Cooper, but it could be either, it could be both. Lucy does it just out of spite and mischief. Cooper's the one that brought it in the house. Yeah, he's done that twice now. But Cooper is a food mongrel. And for some reason or another, he is attracted to the fertilizer, the bulb fertilizer. He's trying to eat it and lick it. So, I don't know what we're going to do. I, I need y'all's advice, maybe, because we're not wrapping every single bulb in chicken wire. Uh, that's one thing. And secondly, uh, I, I'd like something we could spread, pour out, you know, especially in our fruit tree guilds where we've got, a, we're planting a whole lot of bulbs, uh, to keep the dogs from liking it or the smell or something. I don't know. So if you have any ideas out there, let me know. I even thought of human urine. I know that sounds crazy, but there are reasons to use that. But anyway, we are going to put down some chicken wire and use some landscape pins over these two areas to try to see if that will stop them from digging up my gladiators. I want, I need all 24 of my gladiators. I'll save you, Lamsey. <laughs> You'll be my gladiator? I'll be your huckleberry. Uh-huh. Well, I want my 24 gladiators shooting up nice and tall with the big purple balls on the ends. It would be so pretty. Let's go planting, y'all. that solves the problem. While Randy's doing this other side, I'm going to take y'all along and show you the next uh, bulbs that I'm going to be planting in three different planters. Y'all might remember back in August of last year, I was starting to plant for fall containers. And in these two containers, I planted some um, sedum and this grass and this was a new one from Southern Living's De Design a Line series called Cordy Line. What I'm going to do is take these Cordy Lines out, leave the sedum, and I'm going to be planting some bulbs in that. Uh, these take full sun and right now we don't have a lot of places in our yard, in our landscaping that are full sun. So probably what I'm going to do is just leave them in pots, take care of them. Um, I don't have to put them in the greenhouse. Obviously, they overwinter. They're dormant right now. But eventually, eventually, when we get our greenhouse going, we've got a bunch of trees to clear out up top here. Um, we'll have more landscape areas that will be full sun so i'll just be saving these until such a time as this when we actually have some full sun landscaping so let me get these out of here first and then i'll talk to you about what i am planting in the middle i just love tulips so i had ordered some um, i had seen on another gardening channel that i just love to watch these white 
24 inch tall, beautiful white tulips called Clear Water. And I looked them up and they're zones three through eight. We're zone eight, so we're really pushing it. Again, with tulips in this zone, in this area, they really need to be dug up after they're through blooming and stored. And I, I hope they wouldn't dry out in a refrigerator. I'll have to Google a little bit more about protecting them and what I need to do to make sure they last. If you know anything, let me know in the comment section below about how I can save these. But I wanna see how they do here. I ordered them from DutchGrown.com and I've got 50. So I'm gonna put some in these two containers and then I have a really large barrel down below that uh, I can put a whole ton of them in. And as we drive up the entrance, we will see this beautiful show of white tulips, hopefully. They do take full sun and the little location I have down below is not a full sun location, but it is in winter and early spring because there aren't any leaves on the trees way above them. So hopefully they'll do well there. We'll see how they, how they do. I can always again save them for my area back there when I get some full sun. So let's get these planted and I'll see how many I can do. You're supposed to uh, bury them five inches deep. And again, with containers, like I said in part one, you can really cluster them pretty tightly together. Normally you would put these about five inches apart, but clustering them gives a beautiful, um, thick, lush show of beautiful tulips. So let's do this and then we'll go down below. Just like in part one, I'm going to put my Espoma bulb tone in the hole first, mix it in with my potting mix. Then I will lay out my bulb. Point side up. It looks like 12 is gonna fit perfectly in here. So that would leave me with 26 for down below. So let's come closer and you can take a look inside. I think 12 nestled in there will look absolutely stunning. And they're already starting to sprout. So now, just need to cover it up with some potting soil. And I'll water it in a little bit. Do the other one, and we'll go down below. 26 clear water tulips in this big bucket. Now, I didn't put them that close to the edge because I'm going to be planting some Creeping Jenny around the side. And I already have a few that were in this bucket to begin with. So I'll show you that when I finish covering these up. Just four little baby Creeping Jennies that were wintered over in this bucket. And I will add more, but it's a start. Now I will lightly water this in. We're expecting more rain, quite a bit of rain in two days. So I don't need to water a whole lot. When you're doing a small little mass planting, uh, like I'm doing here, you just dig down as much as it says to, which is really just about two to three inches on these. And what I am planting are some trout lilies. Normally trout lilies are yellow, but I found some that are white. And trout lilies need probably uh, a part to full shade, which is wonderful. It's very seldom that you find <laughs> bolts that require shade. This brand or variety is called, oh goodness, Erythronium, Erythronium White Beauty. So for a mass planting, 
I am just going to lay my chicken wire down in here in the hole. my bulbs in here and then fold the chicken wire back over the top. On to the next thing. Well, it's been three days. The rain caught us on our first day of planting bulbs so we're continuing today and i'm really 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 super excited about this if you watched our channel you remember last year we made these planter boxes along the front of our garden beds and i did it for companion planting um, really to draw in the good beneficials and to try to deter the pests and I think it worked pretty well. But I will say this, I ended up planting a couple of seasons. I planted um, early summer and then, or maybe late spring. And then about mid-summer, I had to put other things in here because the things that I had uh, were not looking that great, especially in the nasturtiums. They were pretty eaten up with aphids. So. This year I decided why not get, since I'm going to have to probably plant it twice, why not get an early start with some beautiful bulbs. Being an April baby is probably why I just adore tulips, but unfortunately in the south they just don't grow very well here. But this kind is supposed to. It's called Tinka, T-I-N-K. And I bought them from uh, the Color Blends Company, which is an extremely reputable bulb company. I highly recommend it. From what I have seen, they uh, have very, very good reviews. Now, the thing about tulips is that they have to be pre-chilled for six to eight weeks. So when I got these in early October, I went ahead and put them in the refrigerator Again, I probably should have planted them in November or December, but as I explained earlier, we just were too busy with other things and holiday time. So now I'm getting to it. So in these planters, I am going to be planting 630 of these Tinka tulips, which amounts to about 10 to 11 a square foot. You can see they're pretty small. So for uh, the maximum punch you need to plant them around 10 to 11 per square foot for high density pow now these tinkas are so beautiful they're a creamy yellow and they have like a current red color on the three outer petals and when the sun hits them they just explode and burst open like a lot of little creamy stars with red accents So can you imagine in the spring what this is going to look like with 630 tulips in it? I can't wait. Now, I will have to take these up and I would have to take them up anyway. So honestly, it's going to be easier to take them up out of this than it would be in ground. Although we are going to put a few, because uh, I ordered a thousand, we are going to put a few like 60 around each of our six fruit trees right at the base of the fruit tree. I probably won't mess with taking them up. I'll just see how they do uh, overwintering here. And I have some other tulips too that are only going to go in containers and I'll be showing you those in a little bit. But for now what I've done, these have to be planted about four inches down. So I scooped out a bunch of my potting uh, mix that was in here. I've sprinkled it again with the bulb tone. 
So I'm just going to push these that I have down in here a little bit and cover them up with some more potting mix and continue on. All right, that's nice and topped off. Um, you might remember last year also when we first built these, I was just hand watering. Well, that got old really quickly. So what I did is I bought this soaker tubing here and I tied it in to our drip irrigation system. So these come on, um, well, in the heat of summer, they were coming on every day once in the morning and once in the evening and because it was soaker hose it wasn't just overloading it with water it worked really really well so when I get this all done I'll put my soaker hose back down in here and I just kind of looped it all the way down and then kind of back up so that I had some at the back and some at the front so I'll continue on. Oh, and besides being a complete klutz, sometimes I'm scatterbrained. You spell Tinka, T-I-N-K-A, not T-I-N-K, don't know why I said that. And there was something else too I needed to correct. Oh, um, if you live in colder zones, you don't have to pre-chill tulips. But normally, like in zone seven and higher, you have to pre-chill. I'll continue. I have a bunch of these landscape pins up in my greenhouse somewhere, so eventually I will get them all lined out here. But here's the longest row done. I cannot wait to see it in the spring. The only thing I'm wondering about is whether or not the roots are going to grow out the bottom. But I guess they just air prune, huh? But underneath, if you remember, it's... Uh, hardware cloth and then I put oh what is that brown stuff called no goodness gracious sakes alive I decorate with it you know the brown stuff that's woven the tanny brown stuff burlap anyway it has wire hardware cloth on the bottom and then the burlap so the roots could go grow through it but I think it would act just like it does with the buckets hopefully it'll work we'll see but like I said once these are through blooming I will yank them all up cut all the little brown stuff off and store them back in the refrigerator until next year Look, one is starting to sprout. And I forgot to say, the tinkas get 10 to 12 inches tall. So it's gonna be just perfect. Six hundred and seventy-two tinka tulip bulbs. 
all along the front of my garden beds. I hope, I hope it's off to work we go. <laughs> okay. This is a peach tree. Bare root. Our peach tree that we had back here. The last two years it was in full bloom and we had hard freezes. And even though I covered them, the, after the first year, one whole limb died, one variety. And then last year, it all died. So, I had to order another one. And I did a video on planting a bare root fruit tree and all the training systems, that's two other videos. But I wanted to mention something that I did forget to mention before. Anytime you're planting a, a tree, fruit tree, you want to plant the weakest limb toward the south so that it has the better chance to get as thick and as big as all the rest of the limbs. Now, there are four varieties on here. These two smaller limbs are the same variety. May something or other. Well, May Pride. So, uh, I'm going to kind of put these more toward the south, which is that direction. We have to plant the tree first, and then we've got some daffodils to put around the outer edge. Uh, I've got 300, but divided by six fruit tree gills, that's only 50. So that's really not too terribly bad. And hopefully we'll get it all done today. So um, the name of the daffodil is Sir Winston Churchill. And let me get the tree planted, then I'll tell you a little bit more about the daffodils. I have enough of these Tinka tulip bulbs left to plant about 41 around the base of each of these fruit trees. I used my auger to kind of turn it to its side and kind of just drilled out a circle about four inches down. And now I'm just gonna throw these in there in a line and cover them up. Oh, I forgot to add my stuff. I'll just add it on top, I guess. The daffodils, as I mentioned, are Sir Winston Churchill daffodils. They get between 16 and 18 inches tall. They're actually a mid-spring bloomer. And lasts for quite a while. And they're, the blooms are about two inches around. A yellowish white, pale yellow, off-white, creamy color and you usually average about four blooms per stem. So they should be really pretty. Honestly, 50 is not enough for this. Uh, we should be probably planting double that, but you know, you do what you can do. There are already some daffodils planted around uh, the rings of every one of these, but I've noticed over the years that some of them come up, some of them don't. And I bought them from all different kinds of places. So this time I bought from a reputable company. And I had mentioned before uh, Color color Blends, I think, is where I got the tulips and the trout lilies and something else. But I got these, and I can never pronounce the name, but it's K, letter K, Van, and then it's some, I don't know, French name. Boogie Mini Mini. Starts with a B, B-O-U-G-E something or other. I'll put it down in the screen below. So, we're going to get started planting these daffodils. I don't know if we'll get them all done today. Our tire gets tired a lot faster than it used to.
auger is fantastic, but man, when it catches a hole of a big tree root, like coming from this tree over here, oh wee. Some of you might remember last year for my birthday, last spring, I got this planter box and you probably saw pictures, at least on my Facebook group page anyway, of uh, the plants that I had in it, which we loved. I replaced a few for summer, but when I was out, when we were out planting all the bulbs in the fruit tree guilds, I had some narcissus that I had planted out there several years ago. Most of them didn't survive, but a few of them did. Um, but they looked out of place because there was like one here, there, in two or three of the guilds. Looks like onions to me. <laughs> They're narcissus. They have these sweet little white yellow flowers. They're one, one of the first things to bloom. I believe they're still the daffodil family. Can you eat them? No. I don't think so. I don't know. I never looked it up. Anyway, I think they'll be really pretty here right by the porch where we come in and out of all the time. There's also two or three or four uh, daffodil bulbs also in there. So we'll see how it looks, how it blooms. So all 1,400 and something, maybe 1,500 bulbs are planted. We hope you enjoyed this two-part series. And up next, I will be doing uh, some more transitioning to farmhouse inside. So stay tuned. And remember, bye and have, have a, a good one. Hey, Huckleberry. There you go. We're all done. You want to go inside? Yep, I'll be your Huckleberry.